What? Talk to Brandon. Okay, I'll talk to Brandon. <laughs> This is Caps PA announcer Wes Johnson, and you're listening to Bob the Pod. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new edition of What the Puck. It is a Washington Capitals podcast, which means it's a podcast about your 2018 Stanley Cup champions. Thank you all for listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and YouTube. Coach Dan has his hand up. Uh, I, you, it's funny you should be mentioning all the places we're located because you're going to be mad at me. What'd you do? <laughs> I went back to using the Apple Podcast app. No! I found that I actually, I don't mind it and the, the, the flexibility that I can get with that. I like better than um, Overcast. I was, oh, yeah. I think, is that the one that you used? I, I use Overcast as I don't yeah. turn my phone to vibrate because I am a, uh, <laughs> I am a professional. So I, I was using Overcast. I like it. I don't like that I can. There was some some setting over the weekend that I was like, I don't like. I can't do that, and I know I could do it on the Apple Podcast. So I'm going back to that one. I'm a simple man. I have simple tastes. I just need a little. 10 second 15 second jog forward jog back so i can get past commercials i have that and just download and then that's all i need that's all i don't need you to tell me hey since you like this you might also like this i don't need any of that oh i don't i think i turned off notifications so they don't do that to me yeah i don't need automatic downloads i will do it myself Ooh, i don't need that a- i like for certain ones caps this morning automatic download because i will a hundred percent forget And then I'll get in the car and I'll be like, now I got to drive to work and listen to music. (laughs) Uh, Sirius XM Turbo, all of the best uh, new metal and alternative from the early 2000s. But anyway, we're not we're not here to talk about podcasts or we're not here to talk about uh, that. But we're here to talk about the Capitals. You remember like two weeks ago where like the biggest concern was what's wrong with the Caps? Why? Why aren't they playing well? What's going on? Remember that world, you know, before, like, that was our biggest concern. Because I'm going to I'm gonna be frank with you guys. We're going to get into other stuff besides hockey on this podcast. Because uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. But crazy, crazy times we're living in. We're going to try to entertain you as much as possible. Uh, but let's talk about the Capitals. They're not doing well. They uh, started off the year 2022 losing a lot. They continued that trend through February. Now we're in the third month of the year and the Capitals, I mean, for all for a very long time, it seemed like the top four, top eight of the Eastern Conference, top four of the division were kind of all figured out. But there's a lot of chatter going on right now that the Capitals, I mean, there's only 30 games left. They they might be looking in the rear view going, ah, oh, you know, objects may appear larger than they actually are or something. Whatever that saying is. Like it gets closer. <laughs> gets closer, that's it. It gets closer. Which technically then makes them larger. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh it's like that T Rex in Jurassic Park. So mm-hmm. great movie. Which, which the new one actually looks pretty good. Dinosaurs in the snow. But anyway. Um, that's what we can call this team, hey, Dinosaurs bringing, in the Snow. That's the name of this the, episode. There you go. They're bringing <laughs> the band back together in the next one. That's uh, right. I mean, look, they were in first place at the start of 2022. Right. They are now in fourth place, and Columbus is right on their butt. Yeah, it's at so T-Rex right in the rear view. That's what Columbus they are, is. There is a very real possibility that this team does not make the playoffs. They are, as we're recording on, what is this, Wednesday night? Wednesday the second. Wednesday the second. They are my daughter's one month old today. Congratulations! They are, thanks, man. Uh, eight points up on Columbus. With uh, Columbus has a game in hand, so that's a problem. I mean, you're looking at four point four games at behind, three games if they they win their game in hand. That's I mean, Columbus is very much on their butt, and this is a team that has played horrible. 
No, that's get, dramatic. Really we, not good since the start the, of the Horrible's year. about right. I mean, they're not getting the goaltending. They're not. They they're actually special teams. I was about to say they're not getting special teams, but they are. It's gotten better. The special teams. They've got eight power play goals in their last eleven. Five in their last six. They're getting shorthanded opportunities, shorthanded goals. So special teams is turning around a little bit. I still think they need a new person in charge. Of that this season would be great. Next season would be fine. At this point, if that's what we're gonna do, might be more than just one coach that's coming in next season. <laughs> but they're not getting enough goal scoring. I mean, there's a real possibility that they don't make the playoffs. Very good possibility of that. But like you said, uh, the special teams are kind of doing their thing. They're getting better. That was a big complaint that we had for a long time. But how much of that has to do with the fact that TJ Oshie's back on the ice? I mean, he helps. Big time. From his energy, his style of play, to where he plays on the ice, what he brings to this team, they can't replicate with anybody else. Well, the energy probably with Ovechkin, but he's he's oh he's, he's got a lot going on energy. right now. Well, that's true, but I mean, I'm thinking like over the past couple of years, right. that sort of crazy Ovechkin that Mike Green tried to get away from when celebrating after a goal, like that dude has has he's mellowed a bit. You know, he's got two kids now. He's married. He's in his mid thirties. You know, he's not going out clubbing anymore. It's too loud. He wants to get <laughs> home, put his feet up, have a nice cup of tea. No, um. You know, and so I think having Oshi out there, I mean, you, the better players you have, the better your power play is going to be and your penalty kill. Like, that's just a given. So having a top line player like TJ Oshi definitely helps this team. There's possibility. I know it was talked today in, in GM Brian McClellan's press conference that I think Laviolette was saying that they think Anthony Mantha could be back. In they're saying, they're game. saying they could be back against Carolina on Thursday. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, that'd be pretty quick. And I, I think you don't want to rush him back because if you're fighting to get into the playoffs and this team very much is, then you need him to be healthy. You can't afford to bring him back too soon. It's not the playoffs. You know, you need to get to the playoffs first. You need him to be healthy to help you in that run to the playoffs and then hopefully a long run through the playoffs. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if he did not play on Thursday night against Carolina. But I think he, you know, he's almost back. And I think every guy that they get back that's supposed to be a top-line player it, it can only help. It can't be much worse. You know, they can come back and be terrible. And Mantha can, you know, not score any goals. Oshie could play terribly. And, you know, it just means that they're not they're going to be doing as bad as they're doing already. So what they need is they need their top-line guys to step up. They need some of the guys on the, the bottom six to step up. And we think that fourth line has been doing well. Well, it, it's taken a bit of a hit now. Yes. With Haglin literally, is literally took a hit. Yeah. Haglin in the last practice or the last drill of practice the other day, he's out with an eye injury. He's out indefinitely with an took, eye injury. Took a stick surgery. to the face. Was it yeah. a stick? He took a stick to the face. He's going to need surgery. So I think he's out for the season, barring another doctor being like, what is that guy talking about? Like, you just need to go put an ice pack on it. And you'll be fine. Like that's, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think, we're probably not going to see Haglin for the rest of the season. I, maybe I'm being a little pessimistic. And for the longest time, you and I were saying he was trade bait. He was the guy that we wanted out of here and get something back trade for. trade bait so much as he was going to be traded. <laughs> so, like, I don't think there's any other team out there going, I think we need some Carl Haglin. Well, here, here's the thing. Carl not Haglin... We, we've been really unhappy with Carl Haglin the last couple months, like ever, for the whole season, really. He's been our scapegoat saying, this guy, he's got to go. He's not doing his thing. But he's he was tied with Yevgeny Kuznetsov for points uh, the last two months. Yeah, he's been doing well lately. I mean, he, he really picked up his game, yeah. What is going on at Caps practice? Everyone gets hurt at Caps practice. Have you noticed that? Like, Sammy got hurt during Caps practice. Yeah, but he's made out of pieces of wet paper mache and like i don't know something really breakable <laughs> he's, he's sam trying, jackson from that movie he's <laughs> he i sam sonoff both of them sam sonoff and check both can't stay healthy as soon as they start playing well something happens to him i think that's why the team needs to go out and acquire a goalie in mcclellan's press conference today he was talking about that in terms of you know that's a possibility that they're looking before I think he was alluding to the fact that they were trying to get Mark Andre Fleury, but Fleury wasn't interested. Fine. And so, 
he talked about, oh, well, there's maybe one or two other goalies that we really think are out there that we could get. And I'm like, well, I mean, maybe there could be better players, but there are other goalies you could go and get. I don't know who, but I'm not a general manager. That's not my problem. That's his problem. And that's something that he needs to solve. I mean, everyone's saying, let's bring back Holpe. Uh, Brian McClellan, he's saying today that, oh, they're not going to be very aggressive at the trade deadline. But I, I feel like you've I got... I so- is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's just trying to psych everybody out, saying, like, you know, it's like when you go to, to a, a car dealership and you're like, ah, I'm not really that interested in that really nice Mercedes over there. You, you, you don't want to sell me that. Like, maybe he's trying to play one of those deals here, but there's a lot of holes to fill on this team, and everyone's hurt, and you, no one can stay healthy. Even guys like Joe Snively, who has been lighting the world on fire, he's missed the last two practices because he's had an injury that has finally caught up with him. Um, local kid really starting to show off. He's done really well uh, this season, but just looked absolutely... I mean, he's hurt the last uh, two practices, so he wasn't there for that. Um so it looks like the Capitals are going to have to go back down on the farm once again to fill a couple of those spots, especially Carl Hagelin. We know that's going to now have to have a spot filled. I wonder if it, that's Janssen Fialbi's opportunity. You think so, Janssen Fialbi? I mean, it's a hair for hair switch, you know? That's true. That's true. He's got the lettuce. I mean, it could work. I mean, Snively, hopefully he's back. Dude's, I mean, he's got seven points, four goals, three assists in 12 games. That's pretty good. You know, I think he definitely has taken a great advantage of this opportunity, and hopefully he can go ahead and continue doing that and stay healthy. But if Mantha is able to return, you know, then he can fill in for, you know, one of the spots of someone who's, you know, not Hagelin's spot per se, but he's taking that roster spot. And then, you know, maybe you do have to call somebody up. Maybe you do call up an Axel Janssen Fialvi or someone from Hershey to be able to, you know, Leeson or... Is Leeson still on the roster at the moment? I can't... They keep bringing these guys up and down. It's so hard to to keep That's... track of who's where. But I think Leeson's down. So it's either him or Protus they potentially bring up and, and have them fill in um, and kind of see what the team does from there. But uh, McClellan was talking about how, you know, the, the roster f- uh, constantly fluctuating in terms of who's up and who's down is probably a big issue or a big reason in terms of why they're at where they're at right now. And I was like, mm, other teams have the same issue, buddy. And they're doing well. So I'm not buying it. Let's, let's switch gears here a little bit, looking at the – everything going on with the Capitals. They've lost six straight at home. What's going on? Why can't they win at Capital One Arena? They, they've done, you know, okay on the road. They're a little bit more of a threat on the road. We were talking, I think it was just last episode, that these guys kind of thrive on being the bad guy. But what what is it about Capital One Arena right now? Is it Are they just too comfortable? Like, I, like I, There's no rhyme or reason why these losses are happening at home to me. I mean, it is It is a bit weird in terms of the fact that they just can't win a home. I mean, this was a, a rink. This was an arena that was a fortress for them. Yeah. They were dominant at home. Wasn't there one season in the Young Guns era where they never lost at home? Where they went an entire season without a, a regulation loss? Oh, that's that's an interesting stat. i got to look that up. I, I could be wrong. Or they went a really long time without a regulation loss. But they were used to be dominant at home now they've lost 11 of their last 14 at home they have lost six straight i mean i, I was listening to caps this morning uh, john walton had joe beninati on he was talking about how we haven't seen a run this poor at home since 2007 that's a long time which by the way if i'm doing my math correctly what is that 14 years ago 15 years ago that's when i graduated from college that me too <laughs> that's i mean it's crazy you were 07 too? I was winter. Ah, okay. You were, yeah, yeah, you were yeah. In the spring. Yeah, that's I, true. I had, I had two more classes I had to take. Right. Okay. Um, I, I hear you. Three more classes I had to take. Whatever it was. No, three. Anyways, so it's terrible at home right now, and it's tough to say exactly what it is. I don't think it's the environment. It's not like having these many fans back in the stands, and they're like, "What the? Who's making all this noise?" You know, and they're <laughs> freaking them out. It's like. They should be used to this by now. This shouldn't be an issue. And so for them to, like, be struggling this much at home, I think it's it's more a reflection upon the season itself right? and how this team is playing. I mean, I don't think it's, like, something's wrong with Capital One or or something is wrong with how they're, they're doing at home. 
I think it's just a reflection of the season and how poor they've been since the start of the new year. At home, they're 12, 11, and 5. So they had a really good home record up until recently. On the road, they're 16, 7, and 4. So to me, that shows, you know, they're playing well on the road still, but they're really only getting their wins right now on the road. Their last 10, they're 4 and 6. And the Caps are now on a three-game losing streak. This is a team that needs to, uh, you know, they need a spark. They need to be a jump start. They need something to get them going. You know, maybe the Toronto game, even though they just kind of crapped out in the end, maybe the Toronto game is one where they made that comeback that kind of gives them a little bit of a spark going forward. But it's not necessarily getting any easier. I saw it somewhere. It might have been Russian Machine to put this out or Japers Rink there. They have, like, the fifth hardest schedule the rest of the way. It's it's a rough one. It's two months left, and, and it is not a lot of days off. I mean, we were complaining January and a little bit of February about all of this time that these guys were missing, and this next two months, I mean, it is this is a ton of hockey to play. And if these guys are getting hurt in practice, imagine what's going to be like when they're playing, you know, three four times a week. It's going to be extremely tough on these guys. But let me ask you: we're, we're talking about these guys needing a spark, and something's got to give for them. Is it they're they're constantly playing from behind? Is it the fact that these guys like can't get the first goal to save their lives, or they can't hold on to a league or a lead? Sorry, because um, it just seems like these guys are are letting early goals in constantly. They're constantly trying to be like the underdogs and play from behind, but they're just not getting it done because it's kind of scary. Even if they do have a lead, I'm still sitting there as a fan going, I don't think they can hold on to this. I think a lot of that is mental where sometimes maybe you can see this somewhat with younger players. I think we saw this with this caps team. I remember a game specifically during the early, early ish to mid part of the young guns era where they went to Edmonton and they went down like three, nothing or four to one or something like that. And they ended up winning the game seven to four, six to three, six, seven to three, something like that where they came back. And I think part of that is when you're younger, you don't have as much, you haven't played in the league as long as you don't have as much memory in terms of like, well, this is how a game goes along. You're just out there playing and throwing pucks around and, and trying to win every game, which you obviously trying to do later, but it's, a, it's a different level because you don't have the same experience. This team right now, they just look tired. And I know they're one of the older teams in the league, but that's not really an excuse. I mean, I f- yeah, you're I feel tired, them. but you're all in your thirties. Yeah. Like, it's man rough. Up. <laughs> you know, we've seen plenty of teams that, I mean, it was only a few years ago they won the cup. So there have been plenty of other teams that have played well where they've had their core. And I mean, look at the, I mean, giving these a lot of good players, but look at the Red Wings towards the end of their, their dominant run. You know, they still had really good teams. There's no real excuse for this team right now to be this poor. And if it's the players, if they're not doing it, then it's on the general manager. Well, first it's on the coach to get more out of the players than he's getting. Then it's on the general manager to make sure that if they're not going to do it, I'm going to go find someone who will. And I I really do hope that they find someone who can kind of set that spark and and do the thing and and get everything to, to get goal scoring happening because they're they're just not scoring enough goals. Ovi Tom Wilson, I mean, he loves to play against Toronto. We saw that uh, earlier, but I'm hoping with the fact, I mean, we. We've been saying this all, all year. Oh, if this guy comes back, then things will right the ship. If this well, guy comes back, it'll it'll fix things. We're down to Anthony Mantha. That's well, who we're I, down Mantha, to. Mantha, hold on. We I feel like we haven't seen enough of Mantha to really get uh, a fair glimpse in terms of who this guy is. But the thing that really annoys me is, I mean, we talk about how, you know, we keep talking about how they need someone back, or they keep talking about how they need someone back. Well, lately they keep talking about whether it's a different player, the coaching, uh, McClellan, whoever it is. After every game that they lose, I feel like someone is comes out and says, well, they just need to do better. First of all, no kidding. Yeah. Second of all, how many people need to say this before someone actually does something about it? Right? Like, what, Brandon, what is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's how we got to 320 episodes. Well, that, yeah. I think you forgot <laughs> the second part of the saying, though, buddy. What's that? It's doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's right now, right. the Capitals are insane. They're doing the same thing over and over, and they keep saying the same lame excuse for why they're not playing well, but they're not fixing it. Ovechkin comes out and says it. Backstrom comes out and says it. Wilson will say something. Carlson, well, we just need to we need to fight harder. We need to go more for the pucks. If you know that's the freaking problem, then freaking do something about it. Stop going over that or come up with a different excuse after every game. 
Like, I don't care if the PR team prepares them in advance. You get to pick which one you want to use. Fine, whatever. But right now, you just look like idiots. Because you're all saying the same thing, expecting it to get better. It's not going to get better until someone puts on their big boy pants and goes to work. And that's not... They're not doing that right now. They're just doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. They're insane, and we're all insane for thinking this is going to change. As, you know, from what we've seen so far. There's nothing that I have seen, with the exception of that bit of good play... A fair bit of good play in the game, the loss to Toronto that makes me go, we might have something here. I'm not seeing it from this team right now. I'm not seeing a lot that's going to, or really anything that's going to tell me, oh, okay. I can see how they can, they can get there. If this team makes the playoffs, they're potentially going with Carolina in the first round. Yep. That would be who they are up against uh, if it ended today. That's a sweep for Carolina. I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't see how we're getting past them. We talked, I don't know, a week or so ago about how, oh, well, maybe they just kind of put their took their foot off the gas and they're going to pick it up when they get, you know, in the playoffs. You may not be going to the playoffs because Columbus is on your butt. But also, is it really that easy to just put your foot down and keep and go? I don't, I don't think so. Is it is it a bad coaching fit? I mean, that's tough to answer because... We're looking at a chunk of the season right now. We're looking at a two-month chunk of the season. If you asked me this question a few months ago, it's like, no. Maybe the power play, but no. You know, this is working out really well. If you ask me now, if this team doesn't make the playoffs, I think a lot of you lets it should be out. You can get rid of all of them. Not Brett Leinhardt. That dude's a hero. But everybody else, get out. Right? The, the guys behind the bench, let's start it new. Because it's not working. Power play has been pretty garbage. They're not getting the most out of the players that I feel like they should be. You know, maybe the Islanders decide to move on from Trots after their garbage season. Caps can bring them back. Let's get the band back together. Let's get the band back together. Bring there in Holpe. Go. Bring in Trots. I, well, okay, the Holpe one could be legit. I don't think the Trots thing is going to happen. I think the Islanders is kind of, this season is a bit of a wash after their weird start. But we'll see what they do at the deadline. That'll be telling. If the Islanders really, like, go for a fire sale, that could be telling in terms of like whether they think they were, had a legitimate shot or not. But the Caps, you know, one, I don't think it should be a fire sale, but they need to do a bit of retooling in the offseason. But first, let's get through this season and let's not play like crap. And getting through this season means stop coming with the same excuse because if you know what the issue is, then fix it. And if you do fix it and you're still playing like crap, then that's not the issue. It's something else. Second is go get a goalie. Don't well, give me the excuse that like, there's only one or two guys available. No, there's 31 other teams. Pick one and try yeah. and go after them. Most of them will say no, but McClellan's on this press conference saying, and he has to say this. He's not going to come out there and be like, our goalies suck. <laughs> we need a new, we need new ones. Well, we, because we that's saw, not going to help the guys in the locker room. We saw VTech come back. He, he was out since the beginning of February. He went down to Hershey, played a conditioning game on, I think it was Sunday. And then he came back in relief of Sammy on Monday. So he played some back-to-back games. He took off Tuesday for practice. Uh, he looked sharp for a guy that hadn't played a lot in a month. But like you said, these guys are fragile. And uh, it seems as if one of them starts to go on a run, something happens, and they get hurt. So I don't know. These guys just seem uh, – of the two, I think Vtex your guy right now. It's his on. It's like the revolving door, you know, It's that, that you get stuck in when you go to, like, you know, Carabas or something like that. That revolving <laughs> door, you just get stuck in that thing. Uh, Vtex seems to be the guy right now. We'll see. I, I have to assume he's going to be the guy up against Carolina on Thursday. Neither one of them is the guy. Neither I one of them seems like the reality. guy. You know who Sammy reminds me of? He reminds me a lot of Varley. He re- reminds me a lot of Varlamov, a guy who at times showed some brilliancy and at times didn't look good at all. Looked like a KHL uh, uh, goaltender who would who would really shine at the you know not even one of the world's best leagues. So it's I, I definitely see Sammy and Varley kind of doing the, the their same thing. They'll be with the Capitals for a little bit and then they'll go somewhere else and there's somebody else's problem. Showing promise does it ever develop in anything? I still doubt it with Sammy, but there is some hope out there from some other people. Me, not one of them. But I know he's young and blah, 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 blah. 
Right now, VTech's the guy until our show next week where Sammy will be the guy. Neither one's the guy, man. It's just, it's not. I think they're the guys to back up. I uh, think yeah. they. And maybe they are the guy in a year or two, but they're not the guys this season. They're not the guys no. now. And McCullen has to go and he has to look at this roster and go, is this a team that can make a run in the playoffs? No. All right, well, uh, what else is going on in Caps world? Not the whole world. What else is going on in Caps world? There was some Caps news as we signed somebody, but not Yay. for this season. Yes. Oh. But not for this season as they signed forward Henry Rubisky to an entry-level contract. That contract starts next season, however. So this kid's 20 years old. He was the top CHL free agent. So that's pretty good that they're actually able to bring someone in that looks like he might have some talent. He is currently playing for the Seattle Thunderbirds. That's I like a cool that name. name. I like it better than the Kraken. He was a fifth-round pick by the Florida Panthers back in 2019. And this season, he's got 54 points in 39 games for Seattle. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I think he's like 6'2", but he's only like 185. So he's a little bit of a lanky guy. He's going to need to fill out with some muscle and some mass. Or next couple seasons. My guess is he starts next season in Hershey, and they'll see what they have there, unless he has a really good camp. But you know what? This is one of those you know high-reward, low-risk moves that you can make. It's not going to cost you a ton. We'll see how he does, and I think you know it's great to have be able to bring in these these talented players. He's from Vancouver, so it's not like they had the hometown um, opportunity to bring him in and sort of have that like growing up feeling. He was a He's a guy that looks like they wanted to get. He's someone that's highly thought of in the NHL world. I don't know if that's highly thought of in terms of um, you know, he's going to be a top six player. But, you know, it's it's another prospect to bring in. He's a young guy, and we'll see how he does. I mean, let's, let's see what happens. Like you said, low risk, high reward. It's all there. It's all up to him at this point. So congrats on becoming a capital. We'll see if you actually wear a sweater one day. So... Now the show's going to get a little heavy. Um, I, mean, I think we have to at least bring this up. We have to talk about this. So, obviously, uh, everyone knows what's happening in the world right now. Russia invaded a neighboring country, the Ukraine, and um, unprovoked. And, obviously, the Washington Capitals are one of the teams that has the most Russians on its team. One of them being the face of our franchise, Alexander Ovechkin. One of the faces of the league. One of the faces of the league. He's been in this league 14 years. You think NHL nowadays? I mean, obviously everyone knows Wayne Gretzky. But if you've been anywhere near the NHL in the last two decades, you know the name Alex Ovechkin. Ov has been known to put out some funny commercials, one uh, that we really enjoyed with Nicholas Backstrom for Mass Mutual, where they're eating some cereal and, and stuff like that. Mass Mutual decided to pull that um, that advertisement. CCM decided to pull that ad, uh, another one of their ads with Alexander Ovechkin due to everything going on well, it's with him Russia. And all other Russians that are playing in the NHL. CCM has said they will not or air any advertisements or commercials that have Russian players. Right. So no Russian players allowed uh, during their ads. Since Ovi is a part of uh, the Washington Capitals, I feel like Coach Ann and I kind of discussed it. We're just kind of we don't have anything prepared to talk about. We're just kind of going to free flow this and talk a little bit about this. Um, on Sunday or actually uh, Saturday it was the, the afternoon game. Uh, against the Flyers, and my girlfriend and I, we uh, were in Annapolis, kind of enjoying the nice weather, and I was like, all right, there's a game today. Do I wear some OV gear? Do I wear an OV jersey? And there was a part of me that went, I, I don't want a Russian guy's name on my back right now. And I love the Caps. I do a podcast, 320 episodes. I've done a podcast about this team. I love this team. I love watching Ovi. I loved hockey before Ovi got here. When Ovi got here, he only intensified my love of hockey. But what's going on in the world right now, it transcends hockey. It's This is a human rights issue. And Ovi came out and he made a statement when this all happened. And Ovi's in a really tough spot right now. Obviously, he is. That's his home country. He is a. Um, he's a fan of Vladimir Putin. 
It's it, it, Vladimir Putin is on his Instagram profile picture. Um, he's come out in the past when Russia has invaded other countries or other places and been in support of Putin and uh, his choices to invade countries like this. Um, but Ovi's kind of in a rock in between a rock and a hard place because yes, he has to be the face of our franchise and say what the NHL wants him to say, but also he can't badmouth Vladimir Putin. If his wife and his kid are over in Russia right now, if he were to come out and condemn Putin, what would happen to his family? So I understand Ovi not coming out and completely condemning what is going on, just saying there should be no more war. It doesn't matter who it's against. But at the same time, any logical person out there has to see that what's happening between Russia and the Ukraine is not um, is not okay. It's it's a terrible thing. It's it, it, we're we're it's we're in the it's 2022 and we're still fighting land over land. Like it like it's I don't even know like like it's the dark ages. It's not like Russia needs more of it. So yeah, exactly. So I. I'm trying to see it from both sides, from the companies going, we don't want Russians in our, our ads. But I also see it as, like, Ovi, Ovi said it, I'm an athlete, I'm not a politician, I don't want to talk politics, which I, I respect his right to not talk about it. But also, you shouldn't have Putin in your uh, profile picture on Instagram if that's the way you feel. Ovi might not be very savvy tech-wise, might not know how to change it, so I, I don't know. <laughs> I, th I would think he would have a team of people to do that for him, but I don't know. But, Coach Sand, what, what do you think of this whole situation? It's it, it's it's very hard. Like, this is I'm very happy that I have that W Capitals sweater to wear without a name on the back right now, because I, I don't I don't know if I could wear an Ovechkin shirt or a jersey right now, even though like it's not his fault this is happening. It's definitely not his fault. Um, I think that there's no there's no way he wins this situation. Um, and, and, Correct. and let's all put it out there that the situation he's in is in no way um, overall a, a big deal when it comes to his thoughts and views on this. What's going on right now in Ukraine is, is horrendous. And what's going on there, that's that's the main issue. People that are attacking NHL players for not speaking out, it's not going to change anything. The Unfortunately, Ovechkin, if Ovechkin comes out and says Vladimir Putin is uh, a terrorist and he shouldn't be doing this, he needs to stop right now. I, I don't think Putin's... He might be hurt a little bit because his you know alleged buddy told him to, he doesn't like what he's doing. But he's insane. It's not going to stop there. I, I can understand, like you said, you see both sides of it in terms of, of, of companies that don't want to have an affiliation with Russian and, and uh, Belarus-born players. I understand that aspect of it. And for the most part, I support it. They have a business to run. I get it. But I also see it from the player side in terms of they're they're in a, a no win situation right now. Yeah, and I know those people out there are going to be like, well, no, he needs to come out and say something. I get that, I agree. What he when he held, he was talking to the reporters, I, whoever prepped him did a piss poor job <laughs> because a bunch of his answers were they're not like bad, but they weren't good. There could have been much better responses. His you know no war or I don't want war. Well, yeah, duh. But they should have prepared him to expand upon that a little bit. And he very carefully avoided certain things, which probably was the right thing to do from a PR perspective. The reality is our climate right now and our, our, our population is so polarized that you're not going to win no matter what you say. And I'm looking at an article written by Stephen Wino of the Associated Press. And I believe at the moment there's only been two, there's 41 Russian born players in the NHL. Only two of them have spoken up about this. Ovechkin and Calgary's Nikita Zadorov. No one else has said anything. But because Ovechkin is who he is, 
and he's you know one of the faces of the NHL now. And for a long time, it was just him and Crosby as the faces for the, the NHL. Or the two biggest faces, I should say. Um, everyone's going to want to know what his thoughts are. For all we know, Ovechkin fully supports Putin in this war, which would be incredibly disappointing. We don't know if that's true. For all we know, he hates it. There was a quote today from Brian McClellan during his press conference, and in, in, uh, Stephen Wino put it in the article here. And he says, difficult, uh, McClellan, that is, said it's difficult for all the Russian players in the league. There's a lot of pressure put on them to have a political opinion either way, and they're trying to balance out how they live their lives and what their political opinions are and the repercussions that could happen back home. It's a difficult situation for these guys. I think that was a really good way to put it because that's the reality. Let me put it this way. Ovechkin's wife, his kids, and his parents are in Russia. And it's not the only Russian player who have their family back home. Russia right now, my understanding is if you go out and you protest, which a lot of Russians are doing, right, you're getting arrested. Yep. Now think about it. If you're the family of someone who actually has some, some sway, maybe not power, but they have, not sway, they have, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? They have notoriety. It's probably right. not the right word, but that's what I'm going with right now. I have a one month old. Sleep is not a thing. <laughs> Anyways, so think about that if you're if you're one of these guys. How much do you want to be put yourself and your family in a tough spot because you've done something or said something that Russia doesn't like? And there's a I'm trying to find it right now. There's a piece in this article where they're talking about um Russian uh, citizens. So there's agents that have spoke to the Associated Press. They said a lot of threats have come on social media, um, but they don't think like Russian players are in any danger. But there's more of there's there's legitimate fear for their friends and family back home. And that you know Russia right now, I believe they're cracking down heavily on anyone that's criticizing the government over there, uh, Russians that is. So I can understand why he doesn't want to say more. And that he just wants to go about playing the game of hockey. My hope, part of it because I want everyone to think that way. Part of it because he, he's the face of the franchise here, of the team that I like. And the, um, you know, a, a player that I, I associate with. You know, he and I are pretty much the same age. I think his birthday is like a Se- six months September. After. Yeah, he's like a, a year younger than me. Um You know, I, I, I want I would have liked to have him come out and say, stop. That's what Zadaroff did. Zadaroff went on Instagram and said, no war, stop it. I would have liked Ovechkin. And, and the fact that he's, he didn't go and change his, he still has, as far as I know, changed his Instagram at whatever, main picture or whatever it's called. It doesn't look good for him. But it's also... He has the biggest profile of any of these players. The only other one maybe is Malkin, who hasn't said anything as far as I know. Anything that Ovechkin does that would take away something from his affiliation with Putin right now, does that put his family in danger? And there are some people saying, no, it doesn't. I think it very well does. It's not like what this country is that you and I live in, where you can come out and legitimately say racist things And your political party will ignore it. We can go out and protest something if we don't like it. In Russia, it's a lot harder and a lot more dangerous to do something like that. There really are no winners in this situation. Everyone's going to lose in some respect. Ovechkin's loss. He's he's probably going to lose some endorsements in the U.S. for, you know... Something that's not necessarily his fault. If I'm him, am I, you know, and I don't even know how this works because I, I just don't know. I don't have to live in that world. But, do, you know, does he try and get his family out? That's also his home. It's where he grew up. It's where, his, you know, he's from. That'd be like if someone told me, you know, you need to leave the U.S. Well, you know, I'll go to Vancouver or something. But, you know, or I know it's still the U.S., but I'll go to Hawaii. I'm fine with that. Um, You know. 
you have to leave your home because it's dangerous. You know, that's, this is where I grew up. This, you know, friends and family are here. It's a, it, I don't know, a tough situation is not even a strong enough word. It's a situation where there's no winners. Everyone's going to lose here. But you know what? What he's losing pales in comparison to the people in Ukraine. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything else to say except for that. It's it's a very scary time. Um, you just you never know what you're going to wake up to, and the people of Ukraine have shown the world that they are strong, that uh, they are putting up a fight, they are courageous, and they're doing everything that they can to not let Russia take their land away. Um, and I think, I think Putin's a little bit scared of that right now. I think he's shocked that that number one, they weren't welcomed with open arms and number two, that they're putting up a fight against him. I don't think he was expecting that. Uh, all we, all we can do, I think it's just kind of hope and pray and, and no, uh, hope that this ends quickly and that it's a peaceful ending and that, you know, the person that is bombing Holocaust memorials, um, gets out of power and takes his, uh, his war and, and I don't even know what to say. It's, this is a terrible, terrible time for everyone in this world the Ukraine people are showing us how to be strong uh, and they're showing us to put up a fight to not just let people bulldoze you and take what is rightfully yours so it's uh, it's terrible that it, it's come to this in this world and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, how it's affecting the hockey world later on in the show but um yeah all right well i mean ukraine uh our our thoughts and prayers are with you at this time uh and let's hope this war ends as quickly as possible uh let's and it's let's just have it this end there's there's no reason for it so that's it for what's going on in the world right now everybody now let's go down on the farm All right, everybody, here we go. We're going down on the farm. We are talking Hershey Bears and South Carolina Stingrays. Coach Dan, what's going on down on the farm? Well, let's start in Hershey, where the Bears went 2-4 and four since we last talked. Not great. With wins over Bridgeport and Utica, but losses to Providence, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, and Utica. So a little split there with them. Their poor run has dropped them to second in the Atlantic Division with 58 points. Five points back of first place Springfield, who have a game in hand. They're also only two points up on Hartford, who have played four less games. And then Providence is also sitting at 54 points, and they've played seven less games. What is going on with the AHL schedule? (laughs) That's a dramatic difference. The Bears will attempt to start their winning ways again tonight at the Giant Center against Charlotte before heading on the road to Springfield on Friday. Then they head to Hartford on Saturday. They'll get a few days off before hosting Lehigh Valley on Tuesday. Down in South Carolina, the Stingrays went 1-6. and six. Yikes! In the past two weeks. They're currently tied for last with Norfolk in the South Division. 28 points behind first place Florida. They are going to go have to go on one hell of a run to make something of their season. And they're going to attempt to do just that starting on Friday when they host Orlando at the North Charleston Coliseum before doing it again on Saturday. They then host Atlanta on Sunday. 
Let's jump back up to Hershey, where the Hershey Cubs clinched a playoff spot in the 2022 USPHL Premier Atlantic West Division. That is too many words for a division. Wow. Whew. But congrats anyways on the, uh, to them, I should say, on making the playoffs in their very first year. That's what's going on down on the farm. All right, that's it for what's going on down on the farm. Now let's go around the NHL and beyond. All right, everybody, here we go. We're going around the NHL and beyond. Plenty of stuff to talk about. Coach Dan, what is going on around the NHL and beyond? Well, let's start in New York, where congratulations are in order for Zidane O'Chara as he set the record for most games played by an NHL defenseman last week at 1,652 games, passing Chris Chelios. Now, a fair amount of people have been fined since we last chatted. Toronto's Michael Bunting, that's a baseball name, was fined $2,000 for diving slash embellishment. Now, this is the second fine that he's got for diving as he was caught back in November. Dude, clearly you suck at this. Stop it. <laughs> Dallas's Jamie Benn was fined $5,000 for unsportsmanlike conduct against Chicago's Mackenzie Ent- Whistle, And then Edmonton's Marcus Niemelainen was fined a little over $2,000 for cross-checking Winnipeg's Christian Veselainen. Huh. That's interesting that two players... Oh, somebody got fined, and their names rhyme. That's interesting. Fun. Yeah, it's interesting. Anyways, let's switch over to the Olympics, which are now over. We had a couple first-time medal winners in men's hockey as Finland defeated Russia 2-1, to while Slovakia won bronze, defeating Sweden 4 nothing. I love hearing that uh, someone defeated Russia. That's there good to you hear. Go. There you go. Five former capitals medaled during the Olympics. Stanislav Galiv won silver as a player for the ROC, while Ilya Kovalchuk was awarded silver as the general manager. Sergei Gonchar and Sergei Fedorov were assistant coaches on that team. And defenseman Michael Yakovsky won the bronze medal with Slovakia. No idea if I pronounced his last name right. Did you see Slovakia when they showed up in like Town Square? It's like that country shut down to welcome the bronze medal winning team. Yo, it was crazy. I wanted them to win gold. They would have shut down that country for like a week. They really it would have. Like. It's crazy. That would have been insane. In women's hockey, not a lot happened. Canada won gold by defeating the U.S. 32. Moving on. USA Hockey announced <laughs> that the U18 Women's World Championship is back on and will be held in the U.S. in June. Specific dates and locations have not yet been announced. Now, Brandon, he very yeah. much would like them to host a tournament in Baltimore at Correct. Royal Farms Arena. Again, why is it called Rofo Arena if it's R-O-F-A? I don't get it either. Okay. Anyways, I think that's a terrible idea because that arena sucks. It's garbage. Baltimore needs a new arena. Then, not only can they host the tournaments that you would like, but they can also get their very own AHL or ECHL team. Now, listen, if they do the tournament here, they can have half the teams playing at the Rofo Arena and then half at the UMBC Arena. It's easy. Easy. Or you got, you you got two arenas arena. <laughs> like within uh, driving distance. Have it here. Bring it here. Let's do it. Just build a new arena, man. We need money. Give us a tournament first. Then give no, us no, some no. money and then we'll Let's do find it. Find some rich dude who can do it. Who's the guy who owns the Ravens? Build an arena. Come on. <laughs> no, he's got a no he's got a stadium. Taxes. He's doing just fine and a no castle. City ta- build it next to it. <laughs> now, with the ongoing, unprovoked, and likely uh, war crime filled invasion of Ukraine by Russian president and psychopath Vladimir Putin, the International Ice Hockey Federation has announced the following actions against Russia and Belarus. They are suspending all Russian and Belarusian national teams and clubs from participation in every age category in all IIHF competitions or events until further notice. Well done. Now, this means that Russia and Belarus will not be invited, nor will they be allowed to participate in the 2022 Continental Cup, which is from March 4th to the 6th. The Okay, all of these are in 2022, so I'm going to skip that part. Ice Hockey U8, duh. The U18 World Championship from April 21st until May 1st. The World Championships from the 13th to the 29th of May. The U18 Women's World Championship, those dates are to be determined. The World Junior Championship, those dates are also to be determined. Although I think 
that might be I think we talk about that in a moment and that is going to be at the end of December and early January and then the world uh, women's world championship which will be on August 26th until September 4th now, any potential impact of the council's decision on tournament seating and promotion slash relegation will be announced in the coming weeks. You know, I mean, again, everything going on with the Ukraine is just absolutely terrible. But I remember when the World Juniors, it was a tournament right before the World Juniors in like mid-December. We actually were commenting about how Belarus had actually qualified for 2023's World Junior Championship. And because of this psychopath's moronic and and ego and everything else these young kids who fought really hard to get into the world juniors be on a world stage don't get to participate because of this guy's ignorance it's it's, it's terrible i mean it yeah. literally literally killing people and literally taking the future away from the uh the youth of his country yeah yeah i mean it's yeah well put the IIHF also announced the withdrawal of the 2023 IIHF World Junior Championship hosting rights from Russia. The tournament was scheduled to take place from December 26th to January 5th of 2023. The IIHF will initiate discussions in the coming months to find a new host for that tournament. Brandon once again thinks that Baltimore would be a great place for that. Still, you need a new arena. Or, I had the idea, what if you put two outdoor rinks at Camden Yards? I'm down for that. I like Play that. Either. I was going to make a joke about putting him at the Ravens stadium because they won't be playing in late December and early January. But I thought that's kind of mean. So I won't say it. Um, I'm not saying what you wrote next in the notes. So move, even though I agree with you, moving on. Now, uh-huh. also due to Putin's psychopathic deranged war, the KHL has lost two clubs in Latvians, uh, Dynamo Rigo, uh, who have completely withdrawn from the league, and Finnish club uh, Jokrit Helsinki announced that they will be withdrawing from the KHL playoffs. So that's the news for the past two weeks in the NHL and beyond. Yeah, so crazy amounts of uh, news coming out for the last two weeks. And I, it's really, again, we can, we just can't stress enough how terrible this war is and how it it's you're, you're literally killing people. And because of your ignorance, you're you're hurting generations beyond your own ego and your own inability to control yourself and your greed so ugh, just terrible absolutely terrible um but we do, I, I do have to say congratulations to zadana chara one of my all-time favorite uh, uh uh hockey players i mean i am so happy he at least spent one season with the washington capitals i with, wish he could have stayed for this season as well but absolutely astonishing how many games that guy has played. Congratulations to him. Can't say enough good things about Zidane Chara. Uh, he, he's he's one of a kind guy in the NHL. So happy for him. So congratulations to Zidane, Zidane Chara. Even though I can't say his first name right to save my life, but congratulations. Big, big Z. All right, so that's it for the show this week. If you'd like to continue the conversation with Dan or I, you can. It's real easy. All you have to do is tweet to either one of us. You can tweet to me at Brando Cash. Coach Dan, where can people tweet to you? You can find me on Twitter at WTP Coach Dan, talking Caps hockey and other things as they make out, talking about Arsenal Football Club, talking about the Bills, the Washington Commanders, and you know, other sports and things as they may come up. But what else? There are fun things popping in my head in the sports world that's finding me on twitter at wtp coach dan but hey if you've enjoyed the show go ahead and check us out on facebook at facebook.com sorry meta.com just kidding Is that joke probably much run its course by this point the meta well, bit probably well, anyways yeah. facebook.com slash what the puck pod is where we'll post when new shows are coming out as well as all sorts of interesting things related to the washington capitals hershey bears south carolina stingrays the hershey cubs and other things related to the national hockey league and beyond that's facebook.com slash what the puck pod. Brandon and I made a joke about your Baltimore Ravens just a few moments ago. For other people who are mad at me about my joke because they happen to be fans of that purple clad team, is there a particular podcast they should listen to and enjoy? Yeah, if you're a Baltimore Ravens fan, even though Coach Dan has been to a Baltimore Ravens game and enjoyed himself there, you can listen to my Baltimore Ravens podcast called The Call. It is a Baltimore Ravens podcast where we talk anything and everything Baltimore Ravens football. Will we do one after the Combine this weekend? 
Probably not. I'm not going to watch it. Who's going to watch four days of that? But uh, maybe if there's something fun coming out of that or Lamar Jackson decides to sign a new contract, maybe we'll bring it up and we'll do an episode of the call. But you can always find that podcast wherever you find this one. Now, we do this show for free. You listen, stream and download for free on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and YouTube. All we ask in return is for you to please spread the word about the show. Write us an Apple Podcast review. Then let people know on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Pinterest and Instagram and Reddit and Snapchat and Twitch and TikTok. Anywhere you're social on the web or with your phone. Go on social media, say, I'm a Washington Capitals fan, I listen to What the Puck, and you should too. So let's go over the games until we talk again. On Thursday, March 3rd, the Washington Capitals are up against the Carolina Hurricanes. You can watch that game at 7 o'clock and only on ESPN Plus and Hulu. So get ready to stream that day. Then the Caps have a day off. Then they're up against the Seattle Kraken on March 5th. That game is at 7 o'clock. You can watch that on NBC Sports Washington. That's Seattle's first trip to D.C., isn't it? Because they went to Didn't Seattle. They earlier in the season? Or am I thinking of somebody else? No, you're right. So that's their first time in D.C.? Wow. Who am I thinking? And then the Caps have a couple days off, and on my aunt's birthday, March 8th, happy birthday, Aunt Kay, uh, that game is in Calgary. Oh, they start the big Western Canadian road trip. A whole Mm -hmm. week on the road, a bunch of late games. The Caps are up against the Calgary Flames in Calgary. That game is at 9 o'clock, and you can watch that on NBC Sports Washington. Back-to-back games. on Then on March 9th, the Capitals go to Edmonton up against the Oilers. That is a 8 o'clock game on Wednesday night, rivalry night, and you can watch that nationally on TNT. So ESPN, that big rivalry with that, Edmonton. That big rivalry with Edmonton gets that the national Washington, coverage. Washington, Edmonton, all those four games they played in the past or something. And then we will be back and recording on Thursday, the 10th. So four games until we talk again. So plenty going on guys. All right. So that's it for the show this week. Everybody say it loud, say it proud. Let's go Ukraine. Ukraine.